Does a positive ANA lab result mean you have lupus? No, it does not. And I want you to know that just in case you turn the video off right now. Many times I get questions from patients who have had lab work done elsewhere with their PCP perhaps and the doctor ran a, an ANA screen or an anti-nuclear antibody screen and it came back positive and the patient was told by their doctor or by the nurse in the office or somebody that that test means they have lupus. And that is absolutely wrong. That is a misinterpretation of the lab result and it's damaging because now it makes the patient think, oh, I have lupus and they might have anxiety about it and go Google about how their life's gonna change and all of this. And they go down this rabbit hole that is scary for no reason. So in today's video, I want to explain the anti-nuclear antibody test result and what that could mean and where to go from there. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. So you've had some symptoms of maybe pain or swelling or aching or uh, fatigue or some reason that sounded like perhaps an autoimmune contribution to your case. So your doctor ran an ANA test. And again, the ANA screen, ANA stands for anti-nuclear antibody screen. And what this is, is what the name says. It's a screening test. And so what a screening test does is it helps categorize people or classify people. So you run the ANA oops, screen, okay? And, it can, and the result can be positive or negative, and clearly if it's negative, you're fine, right? If it's positive, then they break it down into a pattern and a titer. And that titer is communicated as a dilution. So it's a one in 40 or one in 80, most labs do. Uh, and then from there it goes up, so like a 1 in, oops, excuse me, a 1 in 160, a 1 in 320, a 1 in 640, and so on. So it doubles. And the higher the titer is, the more positive the test result is. So basically what they're doing is they're diluting your result, and the more dilutions they can do where you get a positive, the more of that you have in the system and the, say, the, the uh, more severe the positive, okay? So depending on the lab you look at, 1 in 40 will be the lowest positive or 1 in 80 will be the lowest positive. Quest Diagnostics has a 1 in 40, or they used to. It's been a while since I've seen theirs. LabCorp has a 1 in 80, okay? So the pattern can be nuclear, homogeneous, speckled, there's different patterns, and the different patterns help classify you into uh, maybe what disease association might be related to your positive ANA screen. Okay, what does that mean? The ANA test is a screening test. So a positive doesn't mean we can diagnose anything. What it means is we need to look deeper clinically. Okay, so if we're concerned about autoimmune disease, then the deeper look is we will run an, a reflex, okay? The reflex test takes your positive ANA and then looks at specific antibodies like anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies or anti-Rho antibodies or um, anti-SSA or SSB antibodies. And these different antibodies are associated with a specific disease, like the double-stranded DNA antibodies are more associated with lupus. The SSA and SSB antibodies are more associated with Sjogren's syndrome, and so on. So this is a screen, if it's positive, then we can reflex to, to specific antibodies to then maybe more accurately say, hey, you may be at risk of lupus or at risk of Sjogren's or it may be going on if those antibodies are positive 
and significantly positive in addition to clinical symptoms and other findings, etc. So please don't be misinformed by your doctor who when they see you have a positive ANA screen says you have lupus. That is not accurate at all. Okay. Lastly, what can turn this on, if anything, besides autoimmunity? Well, multiple things. If you look at a, a test report um, that shows the different patterns, you can see, and I'll throw one up here, but you can see based on the pattern there's different things that it can be associated with, like a specific disease such as lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, but also some of them can be induced by medications. And I've also had a patient who's tested positive with ANA with no history of autoimmunity and we weren't even concerned about the autoimmunity, but she was inflamed and the fact that she was inflamed drove her to a low positive. So this patient was training for an Ironman triathlon. She had had no history or even suggestion of autoimmunity. I was running it as an inflammatory marker for her. We ran it and she was positive at a 1 in 40 titer which is the lowest positive. And before she went down the rabbit hole of fearing lupus or something else, I said, listen, you're midway through your training for an Ironman triathlon. You're destroying your body right now. You're destroying connective tissue. Well, the ANA is associated with connective tissue autoimmune diseases. So I said, let's get through your race rest for a month so you won't be at such high volume training anymore and we'll rerun the ANA screen and if it's negative then we know it, it was likely positive because of the tissue damage from your training. If it's positive a month after your race when you haven't trained such high volume then maybe we can pursue reflexing to other antibodies and, and investigating whether there's autoimmunity. Turns out after her race we retested it a month later it was negative and we are correct in our suspicion that it was due to the tissue damage from her training and it's never been an issue again. Lastly, question, if I have a positive ANA, can I take it back to negative? Can I reverse it? And obviously with the case I just told you, the answer was yes, at least with a low positive. She had the lowest positive due to tissue damage. She, she stopped her overtraining and it went away because that inflammation went down. She wasn't breaking down tissues anymore at such a high level. But <clears throat> you can also change it if you have a disease process. I have a patient that has lupus that for 35 years has had a high uh, ANA, ANA titer. No matter what she's done, no matter what lupus medication she's been on or lifestyle changes she's made, Whenever her doctors tested her ANA, it's always been positive and it's been a 1 in 160 titer. So she began work with me. We did functional medicine workup and detective work. And in addition to her ANA, we found other things. And we worked on it. And in six weeks, her ANA was negative for the first time in 35 years. First time in 35 years, I am ANA negative. Thank you, Dr. Vardamus. So yes, you can turn the ANA around back to a negative result even if you have lupus because she does have lupus and it doesn't have to take forever. If we find the right drivers in your case and we address those successfully, we can turn it around and drive it negative. And in her case, she did that in six weeks, what the other doctors couldn't do in 35 years. So to wrap this up, ANA is a screening test. A positive doesn't make you diagnosable for anything. A positive says to the clinician, hey, we should think more and in the context of a given case, inquire about maybe autoimmune risk or history. Are they overtraining and breaking down connective tissue because they're an Ironman triathlete? Um, do they have a previously diagnosed autoimmune disease and can we do some functional medicine work to improve her overall health and lifestyle, which may result in a negative ANA in the future. So don't take a diagnosis from a positive ANA. You need to dig deeper, send your doctor this video, or work with a doctor who understands it and can help you live a life at Optimal.